This conference is the 27th conference, starting from the first ARL computer networking conference back in 1981. Title my talk is the protocol for weather data distribution over AX25, and my goal is to handle any relevant weather data to source it efficiently and uh, rapidly to move it over the internet, over radio, whatever. We're here to talk about radio, so I'll focus on that a little bit and to present it to an end user in some usable form. Ecom SES is a email client AX25, for AX25 packet radio. Anything that you can do with your uh, email client on your internet, like Outlook, you can do with uh, Ecom SES. I still want to multicast. I'd like to use something in Linux. We got Linux in our labs. Um, two meter, 70 centimeter stuff, non-dedicated server. Okay, I'm stuck. <laughs> what do I do? Right, well, I have two options. I either find something or I write something. And then I got a call from the Minneapolis Fire Department. I said, yeah, we have this $2 million, 54-foot mobile hospital. It's a tractor trailer with a sled. Can you use that? And I'm like, hmm. My first question is, does it have D-Star installed? Well, no. Sorry, can't use it. <laughs> the USRP is, stands for Universal Software Radio Peripheral. The basic concept is that it's an open source hardware system which works very well with a, uh, an open source software uh, radio system called GNU Radio. There's a motherboard that you can think of as your digital IF system and then you plug on uh, daughter boards that serve as your RF front ends. And there's a whole family of daughter boards for all sorts of different frequencies. A couple of countries uh, in uh, the Middle East part of the world said, you mean hams can change frequencies? Now, of course, they didn't know anything about amateur radio in particular, and uh, amateur radio in their particular country was just barely tolerated. HPSDR project is open source hardware and software, like I said, for developments of components of software-defined radio. If you want a, I take it out of the box, I set it down, I plug my antenna in, and I get on the air, this is probably not for you. You need to go to Flex and buy one of their radios. But if you want to experiment, learn about SDR, and also be at the forefront of high performance, this then, this is for you. The crystal then uh, has uh, the fundamental tune circuit, and then the third overtone, fifth overtone, and seventh overtone, and so on. And in each case, the resistance of the, the emotional resistance of each, each one of these tune circuits uh, gets higher and higher, so they're harder to operate. Sometimes I have trouble trying to describe how WinLink works, but. I came up with this idea of representing it as a stack. At the very bottom of the stack is the user. That user is in a Red Cross building, or it's in an EOC, or it's in a fire department, or at a hospital. And it's a user that is not a ham, and it's a user that is sitting at a computer that normally runs uh, an email program. So what was the motivation for this? What's wrong with Pactor 2 and 3? Actually, there's nothing. It's a great mode. It's a reliable product. The Pactor modems are great. The bad news is, especially with the dollar and the, and the euro, Pactor 2 boxes now are 1000 to $1,500. But it's a good piece of equipment. So we get asked all the time, how can we reduce the, the cost? I'm going to just talk as fast as I can about APRS, what's new, and a lot of things that are old in APRS, but the... the the number one thing I'm going to get across, uh, and you've been hearing me stressing it for the last several years, and that is APRS is not a vehicle tracking system. never was intended to be so. It's supposed to be a single channel for ham radio, just like the Internet is for other information. That is, if anything is going on in ham radio, then there should be a beacon on the APRS channel to inform everybody around them what's going on. And Gateway's going to look at, going to look at your call, and either going to go, not worry about it, or it's going to say, oh, I know where that person is, and send the bitstream over to the remote gateway where that person is. And the, uh, the antenna here uh, will notice the long element here is for 2 meters and the short elements here are for 440. So this is setting up what is the linear transponder for SuitSat 2. We started looking for other alternatives and geo, geocentric uh, uh, satellites, geostationary satellites, uh, Turnout are certainly competitive in price, and, and we can uh, simply go along with somebody else who's uh, uh, going. Well, that turned on the light bulb very brightly. 
Today I'd like to talk to you about some relatively new modes, uh, digital voice. We're going to talk about these uh, modes right here, Digital Radio Mondial, uh, and how WinDRM was derived from that, and uh, the recent program, FDMDV, and, uh, and the AOR, which was really a predecessor to, um, to these two programs right here, but it's a hardware implementation versus the others are in software. Some have, have likened the transition from FM to digital voice, similar to what we had 45, 50 years ago from AM to sideband. They were disruptive technologies in both cases, and they weren't really backward compatible with each other. I always say in these presentations, the, the bad news is you're going to have to buy a new radio, and the good news is you're going to have to buy a new radio. The definition of DPRS is it is the conversion of ICOM GPS information into APRS format packets. Now, there's some other pieces that we'll talk about, but that is, that's the thing to keep in mind. We're taking ICOM GPS information. It's not in the DSTAR protocol spec, by the way. It's ICOM GPS information, and we're translating it into an APRS format. DChat was Windows only. Um, that's not something I like to hear. So, uh, so I wanted to at least replicate the functionality on uh, Linux and other platforms so that I could uh, continue to uh, participate with the group as they were um, working, working with DChat and their radios but not have to run Windows on my laptop. And then uh, also to introduce some additional features like, uh, like file transfers. How do we get around this problem? We've got a lot of analog components. We've got um, amplifiers, we've got mixers, we've got low-pass filters. All of these are going to have variations of component tolerances, they're going to have variations with temperature, with supply voltage, etc. And each one of these will, variations will contribute to the error in phase between the INQ and the error in amplitude. Well, the way we do it is to get rid of all the analog components. If there's no analog components, then we haven't got them causing any INQ problems. So, how do we do it fully digitally? If we want to get rid of the analog components, we, we still need to do that form of, of processing. And um, what, what techniques and technology have we got to do it? This is the ideal architecture for a fully digital approach. We haven't got there yet, and you know, we may do sometime into the future, but at the moment, we can't actually implement this. But if you had a blank piece of paper and limited budget and said, I want to do this fully digitally, this is what you'd do. You take your, your antenna and you connect it directly to your analog to digital converter. You take the output of your analog to digital converter and put it into a digital signal processor. And you take the output from your digital signal processor and if it's a digital mode, that's, that's as far as you need to go. You could, if you've got it to PSK31 or RTTY, etc., you don't need to necessarily listen to that, that signal. If it's a sideband or CW or other mode that you want to listen to, you put it back through a, a digital to analog converter.